In this video, we'll learn how to use Mari's Paint Through tool to paint images into our textures. All right, great. So I've gone ahead and brought back the environment geometry that our wolf is standing on here. And you can see I've been working on the textures for kind of this rock formation. Now, if you look very closely at these textures, you'll notice here that they look like they are really just photographs that have been applied to this PTEX geometry. And in truth, that is exactly what I've done. And I want to show you how that works here inside of Mari. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the wolf geometry for the time being. So we're just working on the ground geometry here. And I've gone ahead and created two layers in the diffuse channel for this particular object, one for rocks and one for dirt. And I'm going to go ahead and hide that dirt layer for the time being. And I'll just make a new layer here. And just like so. We'll work on this layer. So there's a few different ways that you can utilize photographs inside of your textures. If you have an image that is set up to be a tileable image, uh, you may find it easier to try and implement a, a procedural layer here. And if I can find that here, we'll just come down here to procedural and there it is. Under Patterns, there's a tiled procedural layer that you can actually create and plug an image into. In fact, if I just open that up, you can see here is a location where you can click this button and browse to an image. And there's a few options below in terms of how it tiles. Now, this particular image that we're looking at for the rocks and the one that I used for the dirt, they're not tileable images. So these are images that would be better suited to use in terms of projection. Now, this is not a new concept, projecting an image into a texture. As a matter of fact, ZBrush can do this as well. If you're uh, familiar with the process of poly painting your textures in ZBrush, ZBrush has a tool called Spotlight that can be used to actually project an image like this rock texture into your poly painted textures. Now inside of Mari, what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool called the Paint Through tool. Now that tool is actually currently selected here. Uh, you can actually use the U key on your keyboard to select it if you don't have it selected. But this tool is going to require an image of some kind. Now, if you don't have this open, you'll want to come over here to your palettes and open up the Image Manager. And I've got mine open right now, so I'll just jump over to that palette, and you'll see that I've loaded four images into it. Now we can load and remove images using these buttons down here, or we can just simply drag them from an Explorer window into this tab, and that will add them to our project. Now these images aren't the greatest images in the world. Typically when I'm using a texture, or an image as a texture like this, I like to use uh, photographs that have a little bit more neutral lighting. This had uh, a, a pretty sunny day involved when these photographs were shot. You can tell based on how dark and crisp these shadows are, but it'll work for our demonstration here. So, now inside your project files, you'll find these two images here, these first two. Now these third and fourth images, I don't have rights to redistribute, so instead of including them in your project files, you'll find a text file with links to these images. So you can go out and you can download them on your own. But I'll go ahead and use one of these dirt images for our example here. We'll go ahead and double click on that just to show you what that image looks like here. There we go. And you can actually zoom in and navigate around inside this image, inside this little window, just as if it were inside your canvas as a piece of geometry or something. So you can see this is actually a pretty high resolution image. And I like to use really high resolution images. One, to uh, basically gauge the resolution I have my PTEX textures set up for. Um, so what we can do here is we can actually use our paint through tool to paint this texture in and see if we actually have our PTEX resolution set up high enough for our project's needs. And you can see here with that 4x4 four four, uh, configuration that we did per face, that's actually a pretty good resolution for this asset. If I come in here and show my wireframes, you can see those polys are still really, really small and we're getting a lot of good texture here. So um, this is actually a pretty good resolution for this demonstration. But we'll go ahead and take this image of this dirt, and I'm just going to drag it over and drop it on my canvas. 
Now you'll notice here that the first thing you'll see is that likely that image completely blots out your model, something like that, and it fills up the canvas because of the resolution of this image is bigger than essentially what our canvas is displaying for us. So I have the heads up display turned on right here. You can see this text in the top left corner. And again, the tool help will show you some really good keyboard shortcuts to remember. The one I want to point out to you is this scale image. You can hold control and shift and drag left or right to scale an image up or down. Just like so. You can hold the control key to rotate that image. And you can hold the shift key to move that around. So some really basic keyboard shortcuts to keep in mind when you're using the paint through tool. And this is going to work just like any other painting tool inside of Mari. We're going to paint through this image into the paint buffer. And that paint buffer will need to be baked to the surfaces of the mesh. Now if your image is too opaque like this, hold the shift key down and use the plus and the minus keys to change the op uh, opacity of that image until you can actually see some of the geometry behind it. And that way you can kind of target an area for the dirt. And I'll just kind of orbit around and pick on this area right here. And we, we will need to make a selection. Uh, now when you're working with PTEX, we don't have patch selections available to us. So what we could do is we can make a face selection Holding down the S key to temporarily switch to my selection tool, we can come in and make a face selection, sort of like that. But you can see the problem here is in the way this selection is rendered. Those polys are so small, it just looks like a solid green mass. So what I would recommend is instead of making a face selection, come over and make an object selection in this case. Once we've done that, we can now take our brush that we choose to use. I'll just go ahead and choose this hard round brush. Uh, just like the paintbrush tool and the eraser tool, the paint through tool is going to utilize Mari's brush engine. So uh, you can see here that uh, we're not getting exactly the result I expected, and that's because I left this on right here. Let me turn that stencil off. I'll clear out my paint buffer and paint that in again, and there we go. Now we're starting to get some of that photographic dirt texture applied here to the surfaces of our PTEX mesh. And if we wanted to, we could maybe just paint a small portion in that area and go ahead and bake that down by tapping on the B key. And you can see that paint will actually be baked in. Now a lot of times what I do when I'm using this paint through tool and I'm projecting multiple times for a particular piece of geometry is I'll take and I'll make a projection like I just did and then I'll temporarily switch over to another tool, maybe the paintbrush tool using the P key. And what that'll let me do is it'll let me look at my texture without that image preview in my way. So you can see here that texture is looking pretty good. The resolution of our P text is sufficient to account for a lot of the detail in that image. All right, great. So a few other things I wanted to cover with the paint through tool. Um, again, we're painting on a layer here. So uh, in that original dirt layer that I had, I, I projected using the paint through tool and then I used a layer mask to sort of remove some of the texture in areas that I wanted to remove it. But we could actually come in here with this uh, particular tool and we can stamp this image down. You'll notice up here in the Tool Properties toolbar, we have uh, a stamp button. So if we come in here and stamp that, you'll see here that we actually stamped that texture into the paint buffer. I've switched to the paintbrush tool now, but you can see here if I go ahead and orbit, that texture is in the paint buffer. And if we wanted to, we could go ahead and bake that down just by tapping on the B key. Now more than likely that isn't going to be a perfect projection because we've got a lot of those edges that the edge masking for our projection is going to prevent paint from, from uh, being applied to. Um, but for the time being, that'll work. I think we're doing pretty good. Really it's all about the scale, the size of the texture that you want to apply at this point. That's actually kind of big. These rocks that are in this dirt um, obviously are just color information and they're not geometric information so I'd kind of like to minimize the size of those and shrink those down a little bit but let's come over here to kind of this area we haven't projected on because I want to show you a couple of other things that are available to you with this tool go ahead and jump back to my paint through tool here I'm going to shrink this guy down zoom in a bit closer 
and you saw that I had the stencil mode enabled. So stencil mode is really uh, for images that have transparency in them. Uh, this particular image doesn't have transparency. So that's why when I had that stencil selected, you saw me just painting here and it really wasn't doing a whole lot. So what we do have available to us here that we can use with these images is these luminance and inverted luminance options. So if we came in here and use that, we would be painting based on the luminance values in the image. And this is going to be a little difficult to see on top of that rock texture, but depending on which of these two that we have selected, we should get different results where more paint is being um, brought through in either the black pixels or the white pixels and so on and so forth when it comes to the, the sort of in-between pixels. So there's a lot of functionality built into this paint through tool beyond just actually taking an image and projecting it into your textures. While that is um, probably the most common usage for myself and probably will be for you too uh, when it comes to um, using this tool, there are some other options available to you to explore when it comes to Mari's paint through tool. All right, fantastic. With that said, in this video we've learned how to project images into our textures using Mari's Paint Through tool. Let's go ahead and move on to our final mo uh, module and learn about some things that we can do in terms of finishing off the texturing process here inside of Mari.